I think today's topic of discussion is very important and very interesting. How silica gel, a support material for an HPLC column, gets produced. So there are support materials available like silica gel, polymer based support material, aluminum oxide, etc. But out of all these materials, silica gel is much more preferred and used because of its mechanical strength, stability towards the pH and the high surface area. In this particular video, we will try to understand how this silica gel, a support material for our HPLC column gets produced. Hi, my name is Bhaskar Napte. I am the founder of Pharma Growth Hub and I help pharmaceutical professionals on getting the clarity on such a very important technical topics. In case if you want to understand the services provided by the Pharma Growth Hub, you will find the details in the description below. Let us now begin with the talk. And uh, why this uh, hydrated silica or a silica gel is used as a support material? Because of this reason. It is favored because of the high mechanical strength, chemical inertness, and the large surface area. So this is the structure of a silica gel and how this silica gel gets manufactured is the point of discussion today. The synthesis uh, involves a two-step process. It is a two-step chemical process. The first one is the formation of uh, something called as a silicic acid and the followed by the condensation of this silicic acid. And then you will get the silica gel as you can see on the right side of your screen. Let us now begin our discussion with the first point that is the formation of silicic acid. How the silicic acid gets formed and you will find the structure of silicic acid over here on the type right side. So silicic acids are formed through a hydrolysis reaction. So this hydrolysis reaction takes, takes place between whom? This typically involves reaction between a silicon source and the silicon source like a tetraethyl orthosilicate. What is the tetraethyl orthosilicate or TEOS or tetramethyl orthosilicate that is TMOS with water. So water becomes the source of hydrolyzation in an alcoholic solution. Let us understand how these reactions can be represented. So this is the source of the silicon, SiOr4, silicon source, water and you get the silicic acid at the end. So R denotes the alkyl group like ethyl or methyl and obviously the SiO4, H, this represents the silicic acid. You can also find the structure over here on the top right side of your screen. So this is the very first step where the silicic acid gets formed because of the hydrolysis. Then comes the step number two, that is a condensation reaction. So whatever silicic acid we get formed in the hydrolysis step will further get condensed. The second step is the condensation of silicic acid which leads to formation of silica gel. Now this process involves the removal of water molecule. The water molecule of from the silicic acid will get removed and the, re the reaction can be represented as below. Look at here. This is the beginning. This is the silicic acid. The water molecule gets removed off and this is the condensation reaction. You get a silica gel. We will also understand some of the very important aspects of the condensation reaction, especially what are the important pH, what is the importance of pH, what is the importance of temperature, what is the importance of solvent used during the condensation reaction. Because these different conditions can certainly influence the condensation or rate of condensation. In addition to that, very importantly, the outcome that is the pore size, maybe surface area and the particle shape. And these characteristics of silica gel are very important for the performance of your stationary phase. Let us now understand what are those important conditions which can influence the pore size, surface area and particle size. 
The first one is the pH itself, and if you have the acidic pH, so in the acid in the acidic pH, generally you get the smaller pores of your silica gel, and it is going to be a more dense silica gel. Now, why this is so? Because in the acidic conditions, the rate of condensation is quite faster. The rate of condensation is quite faster, and because of that, it tends to generate the smaller particle size but it will be a densely packed silica particles so this is the situation in the acidic ph what happens in case if you maintain the alkaline ph or the basic ph so under the basic ph you will able to produce the larger pore size for your silica gel but it is going to be a less dense network in acidic conditions you generate the high dense network but in the case of basic pH, you will have the less dense network. Now, what is the reason? Because in the alkaline condition, the rate of condensation is little slow, and this allows the formation of the larger particles and the pores. So, if you want the bigger pores, larger particles, alkaline pH is the preferred condition. What happens in the neutral pH? If your pH is neutral, now, conducting the reaction in a neutral pH can result in a balance between particle size and the pore size. You will have the moderate particle size and the pore size, not extreme in like acidic or alkaline. But the issue is control over the reaction is very less precise. You may not have the good amount of control at the neutral pH. That also indicates that you can control the rate of condensation either at acidic pH or the alkaline pH but not at the neutral pH. So this is all about the first important parameter that is the pH. The second important parameter of your reaction is the temperature. So how the temperature influences the condensation reaction? So increasing the temperature generally speeds up the condensation reaction obviously. However, this higher temperature can lead to more rapid gel gelation which might result in a less controlled pore structure. So your pore structure can be weaker in case of your, if you, in case if you maintain the high temperature, even though the rate of reaction is fast, but you will have the issues with the pore structure. What happens at the low temperature, by the way, obviously the rate of reaction can be slow. It will take longer time for completing the condensation reaction. But the very important point is it is going to be more controlled process now. It is going to be more controlled gelation process and that results in the uniform silica particles and the pore. Isn't it? So it's very important how the silica gel manufacturer controls this very important process parameters like pH, like temperature. And the third one is the, the solvent choice. The solvent used during the condensation reaction can also influence the outcome. So generally the water or alcohol like ethanol or methanol are generally used. Let us now understand if you use the water, a polar solvent, what is the possibility? Facilitates, now this particular solvent facilitates the hydrolysis and condensation reactions, but can lead to rapid gelation, means very fast gelation, which is going to be a quite less controlled. So water may not be preferred choice if you want to have these more control onto your condensation reaction. In case if you use the less polar or non-polar solvent like alcohols, right, then the gelation reactions get slowed down and that results into a better control over the particle size and the pore structure. I hope you must have now understood why there are different in your silica gel properties and this could be attributed to these different factors like pH, temperature and the solvent used. Thank you so much for watching this video and in case if you have any question about this video, please don't hesitate to put in the comment box. Thank you so much.